finally back in Virginia. It has been one remarkable journey. Thousands of miles traveled, hundreds of fish caught, at least 45 species, but the lepomids were the target. I needed the 13. There are currently 13 recognized species of sunfishes in the genus Lepimus, and I plan on catching all of them for a very thorough guide that I'm working on. For novice anglers, mom and dad's taking their kids out on the weekend to go catch some fish to more veteran fishers who might not be familiar with the fishes in their area, to wildlife officials and researchers doing surveys. Where I live in Virginia, seven of the 13 species exist and I have already captured and filmed and photographed and gathered data on all of them. Those are uh, Lepimus macrochiris, the bluegill, Lepimus cyanellus, the green sunfish, Lepimus aritis, the red breast sunfish, Lepimus gibosus, the pumpkin seed, Lepimus golosus, the warmouth, um, Lepimus microlophus, the red ear sunfish, and Lepimus megalotus, the long ear sunfish. But there are still six species that aren't in Virginia, and I felt to make this guide very thorough, I had to capture the remaining six. So, right now, I've left Virginia a couple days ago. I'm in North Carolina right now. I'm about to get to my first fishing spot. I'm looking to get Lepimus punctatus, the spotted sunfish, and Lepimus marginatus, the dollar sunfish. And it's a strange time we're living in right now with the pandemic and all. And so I've been traveling safe. I try to avoid people. I brought cleaning supplies, and I've been watching hockey along the way. Life's a journey and uh, it's full of quests and so right now this is my quest. I gotta catch these remaining six. So I'm at my first fishing spot here in North Carolina and I had big help from a fellow angler who helped guide me here. So I think I have some ideas where they might be these dollar sunfish so I'm gonna check it out. So I'm at this pond, right? And you always want to check the inlets and outlets. And I checked the, the shoreline and I couldn't find any nests. So I heard the water run, I figured I'd check it. And there's like this nice little channel here. And it's about two feet deep, most of the way through, maybe a little deeper. But you always want to look for nests. And there's a big nest right there. There's a few smaller ones, so. And I definitely see a few lepimids. So I'm gonna catch them and see what they are. Now dollar sunfish don't get that big, so I'm I'm just throwing on this beaten up beadhead uh, fly nymph mimic, and I should be able to drum some up. Let's we'll see what happens. Look at that! It only took one minute. I have a beautiful Lepimus marginatus, a dollar sunfish. Oh, it's so beautiful. I drove, I don't know how many miles just to get this and one more species. I'm gonna get some better photos now. I was using acrylic tanks, but I found they just scratched too much. So I went out and bought a three gallon glass tank because that will scratch a lot less. And I lug this around with me everywhere. All right, all that driving, one species down. Five more to go. So I'm actually gonna catch a few more dollars here, get some uh, more species. That was a male, by the way. There was some uh, milk coming out or seminal fluid of that urogenital opening. So maybe I can get a female here and get some more photos, but then later today I gotta go about another hour and a half south, try and get uh, spotted. There's a whole bunch of these. They're just absolutely beautiful. 
And they do look a lot like uh, the long-eared sunfish. But here in North Carolina, they, they long thought that they had the long-eared sunfish through a lot of old accounts, but a recent study actually proved that they had been misidentifying uh, dollar sunfish and red breasts and even green with long-eared sunfish. So there really never were indigenous long ear in uh, whoop, North Carolina, but they do have these beautiful, beautiful dollars. Well, that is not a lepamid. That is a small largemouth bass. So I've uh, seen this nice little kind of swamp creek going on here. I'm gonna throw my line in, see if there are any dollar hanging out here. Yeah, I picked up a nice red breast right out of this uh, hole right here. I think there should be some dollar in here too, so let's try it out. So I fished this a bit and I caught a few cool specimens including a nice warm mouth but I gotta get heading south because uh, I gotta get checked in and the abs play tonight. Big playoff game. So I made it to Lumberton and this puts me really close to my next fishing spot. As you can see I'm still wearing my gator because uh, you know inside I still want to be safe with COVID and all. And Johns Hopkins did come out with a study saying that gators were actually breaking up the droplets more because they kind of expand. But I modified mine and I put in a standard mask in it. And it's really convenient. I love gators because they give you sun protection, wind protection, bug protection. Oh my gosh, the mosquitoes in Southern Virginia, North Carolina, they are not messing around. I'm gonna sterilize this room a bit, knobs, anything I'm gonna touch in my bed. And then I'm gonna see if I have time to go to my next fishing spot tonight and try to get a spotted Lepimus punctatus because that's the next one I need. But I have to get back before eight because that's when the abs drop the puck. Playoff hockey, go abs. All right, I'm gonna get sterilizing here. All right, well this spot looks actually pretty nice. It's right under a bridge. Looks like it's got plenty of depth. It's nice and calm. This looks like I will find Lepimus punctatus here. Get my line in the water. I'm gonna take off a small fly. I'd rather put on something a little bigger. These, you know, Lepimus punctatus gets much bigger than a dollar sunfish. And I'm gonna try a little bluegill bully, which is sort of a spider mimic. It submerges a bit, but it's got this great action with the legs collapsing. Let's see what we can get. First cast. All right, Lepimus punctatus. As you can see, this guy is pretty beaten up. Uh, the dorsal fins are all chopped up. Face has some scarring, but this is what I came for. I'm gonna try to get some more. There we go. Dealing with like a fungal, I don't know, some sort of infection. Check that out. Is that not beautiful? That is Esox americanus americanus, the red fin pickerel. Just a gorgeous specimen. Pulling up some interesting bluegill in this spot, too. Another one. Just uh, really cool, really cool species. I have to give a big thanks to uh, Fisher by the Handle, NC Anglin, for really giving me great information and guiding me, the, me to these spots because it saved me a lot of time and I appreciate people when they want to contribute to projects like this. It's, uh, it's going to help out a lot of people. I just caught this flyer and a lot of people believe 
that these are lepamids right off the bat. But the key thing to notice immediately is just if you open up these sharp, kind of hard to do with one hand here, oh my goodness. Lepamids only have three anal spines. So where my fingers are, that's, there's like six in there. Yeah, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven anal spines on this guy. Lepamids only have three. But that is an adult flyer. Very cool. All right, finally, I got, I've got one that's less beat up. There is some uh, wear and tear in one of those dorsal spines, but this will be a nice type specimen for me to photograph. Ah, oh, yay. You can go. That's okay. All right, I came to North Carolina. Did a hell of a lot of driving around here to, to get what I needed to get. Got the dollar and the spotted. I guess my next stop is Ohio. But, uh, yeah, this has been really rewarding. I have, what, four species left. Now I need to get back to the hotel room. I'm in desperate need of a shower. I haven't showered in two days, and I've been dredging through swamps and fields and cutting myself up. Can I go watch the abs after that? A lot of pumpkin seed in this pond here. Just sort of decided I'd check out these ponds before I headed north. So this morning I just decided to stop at these cool looking ponds off the highway near my hotel in Lumberton and I was catching a bluegill and uh, pumpkin seed but then I caught this dollar. And you know what's curious is, you know, pump, uh, sunfishes can change color quickly. This one had red showing in the opercular flap when I caught it, but now it changed to white. It's so curious. Time to head back north where I'll first try to get some more specimens of long ear sunfish from the Potomac River. Welcome to Maryland. Alright, so it's a few days later. I'm back in Northern Virginia. Actually, technically, I'm in Maryland right now, right on the Potomac. Virginia's just on the other side of the river. This is a little shoot off behind me. And I'm here to get some long ear sunfish. I already caught some, but I need a better type specimen. So this is a new fishing spot for me, and I'm going to try to get them. It's been, a, it's been a hard last few days. The abs lost. So, you know, it's like losing a girlfriend. You know, you put a lot of time and effort into it, and things are looking really good, and then suddenly it's over. But, you know, the world goes on. We have things to do. So I'm going to get some work done. So all I'm doing is going to put chunks of worm on this size 6 mosquito hook and hopefully bring up a long ear. So all I'm trying to do is they like to hang out on the shade and under structure. So I'm just trying to get my worm as close in there as I can without tangling because there are so many branches. So I'm, I'm sight fishing definitely but they're sitting where I can't see them. So it's about trying to poke it in spots and kind of entice them out. I got a long ear. Now I just kind of want to add that uh, the long ear sunfish is is a <laughs> it's a fish that's a sort of a systematic nightmare uh, as far as you know, figuring out if these populations that are spread out across the United States are actually, uh, should be considered the same species or not. Every population seems to have these really unique differences. And so, I mean, it's been 70 years where they've been proposing dividing the group into like five subspecies or even breaking them into separate species. Uh, the northern sunfish used to be considered a subspecies of the long-eared sunfish, so 
Long ears are tricky ones. Go with the current a bit and help me get under this brush. But they're here. So I caught myself a little gringo. I've caught many a gringo. This is a hybrid of a Lepimus macrochiris, the, the bluegill, and a green sunfish Lepimus cyanellus. And uh, just some key things if you ever catch a, gr you know, a gringo. Hybrids are always tricky because they don't always follow a general phenotypic expression but uh, there'll be color on the ear flap you'll sort of see that let me get a shot here so you'll see they kind of get that that barring remains with the spotting um, I'll take a photo of the gill rakers but the gill rakers are long and thin just like they're on both parent species and you'll also notice you can tell there's green in here because of the white on the uh, pelvic fins and the margins of the the anal fin there and uh, the caudal and second dorsal and the mouth is uh, pretty large, it's much larger than a bluegill would express. Yeah, so now that the abs are out of the playoffs, it kind of frees up how I schedule the rest of this trip. I was hoping to watch some Stanley Cup hockey with my father in Illinois, but I'll meet up with him. I'll probably leave here in a few days. And my bail's open. God. But I still got a fish. What do we got here? Uh, uh, look at that. I'll get in some light. So I got another one here. A uh, smaller one, but they're just absolutely gorgeous. This is really a fabulous spot. Uh, you know, there's not too much strong current over there even, but right here there's this nice pool. This fallen tree has offered a lot of cover. I pulled a uh, long ear, bluegill, crappie, and uh, green just at this little pool. It's a really, really nice pool. This is the typical equipment I take with me everywhere. Got the tank in there with some lures. My lovely sandals in case they want to get in. Tripod, camera pack, water. Two poles in there. So yesterday was actually my last day in Virginia. I had been subcontracted to do some other work. I had to finish that project. I kind of got my gear laid out finally, what I wanted to take, and uh, I gave my boots some oil because they looked like they needed it. So from Virginia to my campsite in northern Ohio, it's an eight hour drive. I've done most of that, I just felt like I needed a break, so I looked on the map. I'm at a park just south of 80, um, south of Cleveland. Maybe just pick up a couple fish before I head off to my campsite again, a couple hours there. But uh, I've chose northern Ohio because that's where I want to get the northern sunfish and the orange spotted sunfish. And the northern sunfish is very similar to the long ear sun sunfish. You know, Ohio's divided into two basins basically. Most of Ohio is the Ohio River Basin which is a part of the larger Mississippi River Basin but the northern part of Ohio is part of the Great Lakes Basin and that barrier seems to be a good barrier between the northern sunfish and the long ear sunfish, two species that look very similar. So it's just got to get my line in the water and see what happens. Corn and farm country. All right, so all that driving is done. I made it to my campground at Van Buren in Ohio. I got my tent set up, and I just decided I have daylight to burn. I might as well try and catch some fish around this camp area. So uh, I found this beautiful little spot, and just ignore the tire over there. I'm gonna try to get some lepid out of here.
Oh, that's terrible. Instant coffee in the morning, but I need it. Anyways, uh, today I'm gonna head south to Blanchard River, which is a tributary of a smaller river that then feeds into the Maumee River, which feeds into the Great Lake there. So I'm hoping to pick up a northern sunfish. And there might be some orange spotted over there as well. They like creeks, rivers, um, especially orange. They like kind of turbid, dirty water sometimes. So I think I just need to go find some, some maybe some sandy pools in these creeks and I can pull some up. Delicious. So this water is extremely turbid. Uh, sight fishing is not going to be possible. I'm going to look for uh, debris in the water, pulling trees, etc. Hopefully I can find some some shoreline with uh, sand, maybe fallen rocks. We'll see. Yes, I switched to a, a really small fly and I picked up this beauty, this northern sunfish. Oh, all right, let's get him in the tank. So I did get the northern, three species left to go, but I messed up taking some of the photos, so I need to get some more northern. I forgot to pack snacks, so I'm gonna hike back to the car, eat, and I might move to another spot miles away but still on this river I need to get more northern yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah oh yes I made a I made a call to come back to the spot where I got the northern before so I get some more photos of another one oh, good 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 Well, it's super cool that I was able to get another one. You know, it just made sense to go back to where the first one was. They often shoal together. I'm going to get a couple more. Uh, just to uh, increase the data pool. Let's put this guy back. All right, you're free, Ben. Goodbye. Well, I picked up a little green. So I only brought two small flies out in the field today, and this one is just disintegrating, and the black one, no one wanted to hit. So I, I started adding uh, just a little plastic end to give it a bigger profile, a bit more uh, visibility, and I got a nice one here. You'll notice this one has a deformed uh, jaw snout area. It's definitely not going to be a type specimen photo, but interesting so I drove into the city of Finlay which is on the same river just further down so somewhere back in there the river is I'm gonna go find it and we'll go see if the pollution has wrecked any of these fish populations so it's kind of a shallow river still running a little wider than down low already got a nice green all right, well, a lot of this shoreline is just inaccessible. It's in like a nine-foot mud drop. So, uh, oh my goodness, long way back to the car. See, I was just walking back to the car, and I saw this. A four-leaf clover. You know what? I think I'm going to get this one to a lucky patron for being a patron. Pretty cool. So I just came back to my campground 
and I was like, hey, I'll just go fish that uh, reservoir a bit, see what's there. This is an orange spot. It's sunfish. Only two more species to go. I can't get to the water filling up the tank without slipping in. I want to get this guy some some water. So he's just going to hang out in my water for a little bit until I get the tank set up. Have fun. This shoreline is crazy. My car is actually closer. So I just grabbed some of my water. It should be nice because I'll then get... I picked this campsite because the water seemed perfect for this species. Although there had been no sightings around here that I'm aware of. I just, you know, it's turbid water. Obviously I put in clear water right now. But you can tell why it's called the orange spotted sunfish. These only get to be about six inches, so this one maybe is three and a half, four. We'll get some photos and measurements. Beautiful little fish, though. I just love those little fish. And it's almost a white body. That's what's really cool. Right, let's put it back right where I got it. Gotta be careful here, there's a three foot drop. Gotta get as close as I can. There you go. So with that orange spot, I, I just kept on the fly that got beaten up. I've just been burning and shaving down the threads, but I, I cut up one of my crappie slider plastics and I took like an eighth of it and I, I just put it on this little fly and uh, did the trick. Perhaps finding that four-leaf clover was a bit more serendipitous for me than for the patron I'm going to give it to. I hope I don't use up all that luck. This is a very white juvenile largemouth bat. I got another little one. Well, I picked up a little green sunfish over here too. But you know, I'm losing light. I don't have much time here. I got a stomach grumbling. All right, little fishy. All right, I'm gonna call it a night. Maybe come back here in the morning before I head out. Do some fishing in Northern Ohio, then head to Illinois. I got two left from this species today. That's two more to go. Uh, Ohio's been good to me so far. Uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna try to do a bit more fishing as I head out. I got about five and a half hours to my parents' house, but I imagine I'll be driving around. Oh, I forgot to bring a spoon. Ramen. Okay, hasta mañana. So I'm still in Ohio. I'm about, uh, I don't know, 40 minutes away from where I camped. I decided to hit a few more spots while I was driving. I ended up fishing all day. Uh, caught some wonderful, wonderful fishes. Caught some more orange spotted. Uh, now I need to get to my parents because that's going to be a hub where I can do some other projects. Then I'm going to head north to Wisconsin to do musky fishing. And of course I'll be catching lepamids up there too for a part of this but then I'm gonna head south to southern Illinois where my uncle lives because then I can be close to Kentucky and Missouri to get my last two species made it in time that night to watch playoff hockey with my father the dogs get a hello and I'm spending a couple days at my sister's house building a playset with my brother-in-law for the nephews. Then it's off to a spot that's two hours west in Illinois, a canal right off the Illinois River, just to see if I can grab more specimens of northern sunfish 
and orange spotted sunfish. packed up the pink pole and I'm on my way. Uh, you know, we can't always be a winner, right? You know, a lot of people ask me about that pink pole too. Uh, I'm not trying to make a statement by it. I was just dating a woman a while back, a couple years ago, who lived in England. And when I went to visit her, I brought two reels with me and only one of these uh, collapsible rods. And so I wanted to buy one. I'm not a rich man. So of course I went with the cheap option. And you know, it's actually turned out to be a really good, uh, portable rod for this uh, sunfish catching project. It's caught hundreds of them. I've only had to take it apart once to repair it, so. All right, on to the next adventure. My father and I are heading to the family cabin in northern Wisconsin near Minaqua. We'll first say hello to the local fauna. And then do some chores for upkeep. And of course, fish our lake while we wait for our third musky fisher, my father's brother, Jim. All right, so we made it to the North Woods. We've been uh, bass fishing some nice three-pounders and other ones, getting some weights. Caught plenty of bluegill. I'm with my father, Ace. He's, he's here helping me today, try to get some lepamids. See what else we can get out of this uh, rainbow flowage. All right. <laughs> I caught a tiny largemouth again. We got some. What do we got? We have a bluegill. All right. Pumpkin seed. Got a beautiful little pumpkin seed here. I'm gonna film this and reel in at the same time. Here, you gotta film it. That's a good fish. <laughs> Black crop. Alright, let's wait. We got Jimbo with 19 inch small and first night up. The Illinois stink came off of me. <laughs> All right, so I'm doing a bit of musky fishing. We got Jim here, Ace, and uh, this is sort of the opposite of uh, going for sunfishes. The lures we use are bigger than most sunfishes I've been catching. Oh no, I switched over, did I? We got the GoPro. Fishing today. Tell you what.
Oh yeah, I got it through the eye. So no big fish yet uh, on the muskie fishing. It's been really cold. Feels like below, below freezing. Um, I'm just gonna take the afternoon and go to one of my favorite little fishing holes. It's just a small little hole on a creek. Um, just see what I can pull up, get back. Small memories, reminiscent times catching fishes there with uh, my cousins and my sister and my friends. So, see what I can get there. Ooh, the water's high. So northern Wisconsin was absolutely great. Got to fish with my father Ace and my uncle Jimbo. That's always a treat and whoever else is up there. You know, for muskie fishing, we only had four four days, four mornings just to do it. And it was the worst conditions possible. A cold front had just moved in and the full moon was out on the one night. So it was just, it was terrible. But Ace did have a big one on. We fought it for a couple minutes, but uh, he only had his 20 pound test rig set up and he had a spinnerbait on that only a single hook. He played it great. It just, whatever it was, it came off. So now I am heading 700 miles plus south to uh, southeastern Missouri to get my last two lepimids. Hopefully I can pick them both up there. Uh, if not, I'm going to try out some other spots in maybe Kentucky or more places in Missouri. Here I'm taking a break. I'm in central... Illinois right now. I just found a spot on the map. I said that looks good to fish and there's a river over there and I wanted to come in the woods. I saw some creeks and ponds but obviously that's all dried up right now. So I'm gonna fish here a bit then get back on the road. And then I gotta work towards getting these last two lepimids. Alright, so I am here in southern Missouri. I'm at the Duck Creek Conservation Area, which is sort of near Mingo National Park. And this is actually the last day that you can fish these waters. So, it's October 14th. I've, I've got one day to try to pull a red spot out of here. This might be a good spot. Otherwise, uh, try some other stuff. I'm just going to get my line in the water. This water looks really tricky to fish. It is very very crowded with plants, macrophytes, emergence everywhere. I'm just gonna have to use my fishing smarts, okay. Okay, so this has been, I'm gonna get out of the way here. This has been absolutely frustrating. I've been here for about two hours. It's just so weedy, there are so few spots to fish, and the wind is making casting this light line and these light lures near impossible. I haven't even seen any lepimids. I saw a gar, uh, some bass. I'm gonna drive around and try to find a better spot. This is a little bit frustrating.
nice little flyer here. This little pool is very productive. So here's a warm out. This pool is just incredibly diverse right now. All right, so I, I came back to the, the lake here. I can't, I've, I've been to like 15 spots, and I finally threw on a bobber on a worm so I could finesse it a little better. I found this little outlet I could aim, have the wind at my back, and I just, you know, I saw this log, and I figured there's gotta be something under there. And it was red spotted. So I'm gonna try to get some more. Whoa, wind's knocking the door in me. Let's put this guy back. Well, it's been quite an adventure so far. I've captured 12 different species of lepamids in seven different states, including the District of Columbia. I've got one left, the bantam sunfish, and I still want to pick up some more red spotted, so I'm going to try this little pier I see right here. And then, if I don't get one, uh, I'm gonna try to go hit some of these ditches around here to get the bantam. So I just fished this ditch all the way to this bridge for like the last hour and a half. Only got a green sunfish. It's really hard to fish. If the fish see me, they spook. I think I have to call it a day because I have two hours back to where I'm staying. I'm losing light. I'll spend a couple of days in southern Illinois looking for common sunfishes for my guide as well as other species. I'll scout out a nearby pond with Jim, catching some nice there crappie. And bluegill. We'll also fish a larger area lake, again searching for muskie like we did in Wisconsin. Yeah. This wasn't quite the giant we yes. wanted but it offered great photos for the next guide I'm working on. So one of the perks I really enjoy about this work project is I get to see so many cool animals along the way, like this beautiful snapping turtle. Captured me a long year here in Illinois. There we go. Ooh, that is a nice red ear.
So all I'm doing to get these lepamids uh, long ear and red ear right now, uh, taking night crawlers. Usually I prefer smaller worms, but that's all they had at the bait shop. And I'm presenting it so there's a tail. Gives it a wiggle. I drag it through. They have a protrusible mouth, so they'll grab this and then they'll suck in the hook. So, let's go catch some. All I'm going to do is just cast out. It's just a hook. I'm going to let it sink a little bit. And then it's just a slow retrieval. And there's something right there. And we have ourselves a long ear. Just like that. Devil's Kitchen held some beautiful specimens, but I'll make a stop in Poplar Bluff in southern Missouri, hoping to get some more red spotted specimens. And if I'm lucky, that last sunfish I need, the elusive bantam sunfish. The first fish is a beautiful male warmouth in breeding colors, and of course, more bluegill. So there's this scummy outlet, and I fished it, and it's mostly bluegill. Caught a nice warm mouth, uh, but there's a nice pocket right there. I don't see any lepamids. Gets a little tall right there, and then under the bridge I'll try. But there's a nice hole right here, and sometimes with a lot of vegetation on the shore, uh, you'll just get something that'll pop out after it. So you want to put it kind of in the middle at first, see if anything will come. If not, uh, start taking it to edges. I'm very happy to get more specimens of red spotted sunfish. I even captured more dollar sunfish at this spot, but still no bantam. I really need to focus on swamp-like habitats to find any bantam, so Mingo is my next target. Today I'm heading back to where I was in Missouri, very close to, uh, I'm actually gonna get into the Mingo National Wildlife Refuge today. Uh, Yesterday I spent the day at a place called Snake Road because I really wanted to experience uh, the snake migrations that they go from the swamps into the bluffs and I was fortunate enough to find a whole bunch of wildlife um, in four cottonmouth. It was a very special day. Uh, I also fished some of the nearby waters around the rivers around there in Illinois. Picked up a cool shed and some grass pickerel. But today I gotta get the bantam. I'm I'm hoping to get it, hoping to get a bunch with great type specimens. And you know for me, this this fishing, this isn't just about satisfying myself uh, with getting outdoors and finding these fishes and catching them, but I find a greater level of uh, enjoyment when I know that my actions can benefit other people. And I hope this guide really is able to make people find fishing and more enjoyable, more relaxing, and also piques their interest in these lepamids, just a uh, fascination with these fishes. So here's to today getting the bantam. All right, so I am here at Mingo National Wildlife Refuge. I'm gonna get my line in the water, just see what happens today. It's a big place, a really big place. Well, I've just found the first kind of ditch I've uh, come across and I'm gonna fish it. Fish on. First fish of the day is a bluegill. Oh man, this is a big crap. Look at that thing. So I fished that one ditch for a while, and 
you know, I got some crappie, some bluegill, I've got some green, but I'm gonna try. I saw a big marsh on the map. It just is calling out to me. It says Banton, Banton, but it's it's a, at least a couple miles hike down there. I'm not even halfway there yet. I hope it's worth it. So, I failed bingo as far as Bantam go. I uh, didn't realize how massive this place is. I wanted to try a couple of the ponds after doing the swamp area if that failed, but it's so big. I've lost light. I have to get back. I got two hours back to where I'm staying. I know some contacts. It's time to use my fish and smarts. They know fisheries biologists in the area. They can help guide me to some abundant Bantam populations. Because I do have to get back to Virginia at some point. I, I, I got things to do. All right, so I'm still in beautiful southern Illinois. I'm actually right on the tip. The Ohio River is just over that hill. Uh, yesterday, I put out some feelers to some contacts. I went fishing with my uncle to kill the time. Uh, you know, I learned of some populations in Illinois, but I can't really target those as phantoms threatened in Illinois. And I wanted to get into the Ballard Wildlife Management Area in northern Kentucky, but that is now closed to the public. So finally, at, last night, I, I rode a guy in Kentucky that has caught these and had, has had success there. He got back to me that night and said, uh, he told me the population. Uh, he even said he'd come out and show me how he does it. And so I'm going to go meet him right now, and I'm hoping to get some bantam. And I stopped at this creek just to see what was in it. I caught some green and I broke my collection tank. So I have to go get another collection tank. So I gotta get going. So I picked up a couple of tanks at the local pet store on the way, got them sterilized, and I am ready to go meet this guy. Jason has kindly met me in Kentucky. Although bantam can be caught on rod and reel, he suggests dip netting is a much more reliable method for getting this extremely small lepimid and some other really cool specimens. Oh wow, That's a nice specimen. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that would be perfect. So he just got a bantam for. <laughs> so, if you look on the second dorsal fin, you can see a little dot, a little spot. That one's probably at least a year old. Yeah. But it's got that spot on the second dorsal fin. Mm-hmm. That's a. You see that with bantams, and you see uh, you see the bars. Yep, and it should have a broken lateral line as well. Yep, and then their pectorals, you can't really see it, but their pectorals aren't real big either. Um, bluegill pectorals are much much bigger, uh -huh. much longer. Because you'll catch bluegills that have the little spot there like that too, but they don't have the barring like that. The color, bluegills are more bl purple, mm -hmm. tinted at this size. This is more of an olive green color. Definitely. Thank you so much. Let's yeah. get some photos of this one. We're both getting plenty of Bantam for wonderful specimen photos for the guide. So this is absolutely terrific. I've got Bantam. Uh, I got a bigger specimen, specimen about two and a half inches. Jason caught that one. Uh, I'm hoping to get a little bit bigger one. I'm a little bit ambitious. They don't get that big, maybe four inches max. Uh, but this is great. This is, uh, this is fabulous. Alright, so I've done it. I've captured 13 species of lepimids. 
and in here in Kentucky, big thanks to Jason for teaching me a lot about uh, the behavior, the bantam, the habitat. And I was a bit over ambitious. They, they really don't get that big. I was expecting more specimens to be hanging around three, four inches. But his experience, he says that's a real rarity. Um, so the, the dip nets are sort of necessary. Uh, and you know, the work doesn't stop here. I got to finalize the guide. I'm going to stick around this area. I want to catch some more red ear and long ear for other type specimens. But it has been a fabulous journey so far. And I, it's, it's not over. All right. Thank you for watching. Fish responsibly and good luck. And don't forget to use your fishing smarts. I'm going to stick around here and fish a bit longer and try to get maybe just a three inch or four incher.